Good morning and welcome to our worship on the 8th Sunday after Trinity, the 2nd of August 2020, which marks a new phase in the life of the churches in Humwick and Willington. It brings an end to a phase of only celebrating Holy Communion services on Sunday online in this room, the dining room of the rectory, as we return to Sunday morning worship at the church. Well, perhaps you're thinking that it also brings an end to my extended holiday, where I can sit in ordinary clothes, drink my cup of coffee on a Sunday morning and watch myself as I have celebrated communion earlier in the week, ready for posting on the internet. Well, life is certainly going to change. I'm not sure it's going to get easier or harder. It is a case of serving God in whatever ways we can, wherever we are. And you may be watching this precisely because you cannot get to church yourself and you are continuing to keep in touch with God and his, the worship of his church through these online services. I'm going to hand over in a moment to somebody called Mark Green at the London Institute of Contemporary Christianity. And he will explain about a brand new song which is going to introduce our worship this morning, reminding us that it doesn't matter whether we're in the church building or having to stay at home whether we're going to work Monday to Friday or even Sunday to Saturday, that wherever we are, God is with us. And I hope that through these online services continuing, that we will continue to proclaim that God is with us all the time and in everywhere, every place. So let us now hear how this new song, Emmanuel, has come to be written. We hear from Mark Green. You're about to hear a new worship song by Andy Flanagan. It's one of a series of songs that we commissioned him to write. And you might well ask why an organisation like LICC has got so proactively engaged in developing new worship songs. Well, you can tell what's important to God's people by the songs we sing what they express about who we think God is and what's important to him. And over the last hundred years or so, there have been thousands and thousands of songs of worship and praise, of devotion and wonder. But there have been very, very few of them that have expressed God's passionate interest in our Monday to Saturday, everyday work and activities out in his world. Very few of them that capture his yearning to work through his people in those places, the school gate, the workplaces, the gyms, the clubs, the pubs. And very few of those songs give us an opportunity to bring those arenas before him with hope, expectation, lament, yearning that he indeed would work there. Well, this particular song came out of a conversation that Andy and I were having about how as Christians, we're never really alone. God is always with us, whether we're doing the dishes, writing an email, laying a course of bricks. God with us, the king of the universe, the maker and lord of all things with us, the God who sent his son to reconcile all things to himself, the God who promised to be with us by his spirit, whatever we're doing, whoever we're with, wherever we are. So here then is Emmanuel and his new song, God With Us. We do not sit alone We do not stand Walk alone We do not 
forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, 
and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 5. The Lord says this, Everyone who thirsts, come to the water. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labour for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The response to the psalm is, you open wide your hand, O Lord. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. You, you open, open wide, wide your, your hand, hand, O Lord. Lord. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. You, you open, open wide, wide your, your hand, hand, O Lord. Lord. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. 
you open wide your hand, O Lord. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name for ever and ever. You, you open, open wide, wide your hand, hand O Lord. Lord. The second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate 
and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Over the last few days, the church wardens, I, together with Stephen and Peter and of course Graham, have been preparing the churches to reopen with Sunday morning worship. It's difficult to know where the time has gone. It's been very busy and we are now rapidly approaching Sunday morning and there's still a few things left to do. But for the main part, we are certainly ready to welcome people back into a safe and I hope happy environment. But I'm sure you've all been busy too and been busy knowing that time flies by when you are keeping yourself occupied. Perhaps that was the way it was for all those people who were with Jesus on that hillside as we've heard in the gospel who, toward the end of the day, were getting tired and hungry. And Jesus suggests that the disciples send the people away to find something to eat. But where? At that time of the day? Jesus, of course, knew exactly what he was doing. He knew what he would do. He knew that with just a few loaves and a couple of fishes and God's grace, he would be able to feed all these people and satisfy them completely and there would still be more to left over. A while ago, we did a survey of some of the children in the Church of England school and asked them what they thought about the collective worship, what many of us would call assembly. There was a lot of response and one of the recurring responses was, there's too many loaves and fishes by which they did not mean that, as Jesus was sat there on the hillside, an unexpected delivery from Greg's brought loads more bread to them. No, the children were saying that they'd heard the story of the loaves and fishes so many times they wanted to hear other things. But the story of the loaves and fishes is so popular for a reason because it speaks of God's care for us or his provision to us it speaks to us of his grace and mercy it speaks of his generosity and so all these themes lend themselves very well to the person who is leading that collective worship Yes, perhaps it was overdone a little. But it's very difficult not to overdo the emphasis on these attributes of God, which are so important to us in our daily lives. Although later Jesus was to say that some people were following him just because they had been there for the feeding of the four or five thousand, that they were there for the free meal. Nevertheless, many people follow Jesus for the spiritual food that they receive, not just the bread and fish. Jesus also gave them more than food to eat. He gave them hope. 
he gave them a new aspiration in their lives, a new vision of what those people could be as individuals and as communities. And so nothing much has changed. The story of the loaves and fishes, if it had been told in the schools of, of our nation 2,000 years ago, it would be as valid now as it was then. God provides, and he provides not just for our earthly needs, nor just for our spiritual needs, but he provides purpose for our lives, a vision and a hope that things will be so much better in God's kingdom. And so as we gather for the first time in many months in our churches, we want to express God's hope for us all, not just for his Christian family, but all the communities from which we come. Let us go out on this Sunday, whether we go out from the church building or we go out from our homes, or whether we just pick up a phone and tell someone else that God loves us so much that he gives us all that we need and more. Let us be people with a message of hope, a message of inspiration, a message that the kingdom of God is coming and it is a most wonderful kingdom to be a part of. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. God feeds all who come to him hungry, and we as the church are expected to share in that work. After the words, bread of heaven, I invite the response, on you we feed. Bread of heaven, on you we feed. We have gathered here to meet with our God in worship, let us pray to him now. Lord, awaken in us our need of you and make us hungry and thirsty for you, both as individuals and as the Church of God. 
Let no other issues sidetrack us from seeking you and increase our love and compassion so that we long to serve out your love to the world around us. Bread of heaven, on you we feed. Lord, allow our world to see the true value of things, so that the worthless and dangerous is unmasked, and real needs acknowledged. Guide our leaders in wisdom and integrity, especially in these difficult times, and enable us all to cooperate in proper care and stewardship of the world's resources and of each other. Bread of heaven, on you we feed. Lord, as we eat our food this week, remind us of your spiritual feeding. May the meals we prepare and eat together be opportunities for drawing closer to one another and to you. Help us to be mindful of those who are struggling to feed themselves and their families, those in other parts of the world, as well as those in our own community. Bread of heaven, on you we feed. Loving God, as we come together today, we bring you our thanks. But we pray for those who, for a variety of reasons, are unable to worship here with us. Those confined to their homes. Those no longer fit enough to get out and about. Those currently afraid to leave their homes. Those in hospital those looking after loved ones. Bread of heaven, on you we feed. Lord, we pray for all those who need medical treatment or are waiting in pain for surgery. We give thanks for all those in the NHS and the work they have done during this pandemic and continue to do for everyday treatments. We pray for those who have become addicted and long to be set free. We pray for all those who make wrong choices that have ended in heartache, disillusion and despair. We continue to pray for Kerry Roberts, Vera Greenwell, Sammy Bainbridge, Eileen Gardner, Maya Hill, John White, John Hawes, Doreen Johnson, Anna Hardy, Brenda Barris, Buffy Ord, Joyce, Bill Sawyer, Ina Lawrence, Lynn Kendall, Ruth Broadbent, and Jane Gilmore. Bread of Heaven. On you we feed. Lord, welcome into your eternity all who have spent their lives coming to you and now come to be with you forever. Have mercy on all those approaching death who do not know you but reject what they imagine you to be. May they respond to the true and living God and know your love forever. We pray for all of those who have died recently, whether through the coronavirus or other conditions. We pray especially for Sarah Clemo. And we call to mind those whose memorial falls at this time, from Hunwick, Mary Taylor, Mary Hall, Albert Edmondson, Mandy Hall, George Wade, Dorothy Wardle, David Bianchi, Harry Hendy, Ronald Hall, Kathleen Etherington, William Dunn, 
Gene Sweeney, John Ward, Douglas Balm, John Hart, and Edna Plews. And we think of those who have died in Wellington, whose memorial also falls at this time. Richard Steele, Margaret Ragg, Martin Patterson, Rhoda Walker, John Cole, Elizabeth Cook, and Arthur Bond. Bread of Heaven, on you we feed. Lord, you have called each and every one of us to your service, to carry out your mission in the church. And so we pray. O God, our Father, we thank you for your great love shown to us in Jesus, and that you have called us into the fellowship of your church. As we continue your work in mission, open our eyes to your wonderful possibilities. Lead us to those whose hearts you are touching, that we may bring them to Jesus and learn together to follow him. For you are our hope and our eternal salvation, and in his name we pray. Amen. Lord, thank you for feeding us with spiritual food that satisfies our souls. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one Spirit we are all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body, and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, 
We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father, as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me, since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. 
May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you for ever. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.